So without further ado, I'd like to get to our first talk uh, by the Brazil FrameNet uh, group, a very active group in FrameNet creation that has run multiple, several projects already uh, on frame semantics, FrameNet creations on applications also such as uh, machine translation and frame semantics. And today, uh, this group is going to present to us uh, LATMA, a frame maker tool, or probably pronounced differently in Brazilian Portuguese, which they will uh, correct for me in a minute. And I'm very happy to uh, hand over to today's presenters, who are Thiago Torrenti, Eli Matos, Mausha Gamonau, Frederico Belcavello, Marcelo Virigiano, and Arthur Lorenzi Almeida. And the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Oliver, uh, for the introduction. Uh, actually, you're the one to tell us the correct pronunciation, since the name of the app we're presenting today is inspired in Johannes Lutmer, who was kind of a Germanic Austriac uh, frame maker of the Renaissance. So if it's Lutma, Lutma it is. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, share my screen so we can okay good so you all uh, see our our screen now right yeah good so uh, on this presentation, I'll be uh, speaking on behalf of this amazing team I have the pleasure to work with uh, here in Juiz de Fora at FrameNet Brazil uh, about a tool we have been developing since uh, September last year. It's a frame maker tool, and I'll be telling uh, a bit about this tool uh, today and also showing some uh, static demo of the, the, the screens that are ready so far. And uh, towards the end, I'll be discussing with you guys and I hope you join me in this um, discussion about the need for us to build a global free net database or a global free net data release to accompany this, this tool. So uh, let's start with the motivations that led us into developing uh, Lutma. So everyone that has ever worked with a frame net uh, is familiar with the need to add more frames to a specific domains which are not yet covered uh, in frame net, right? Also, uh, all the teams that have been started working with the global frame net shared annotation task have some at some point, uh, and many of them last year during the International Frame Net Workshop, uh, have pointed out the need to create new frames for languages for which there isn't a frame net. Also, uh, some of those teams have pointed out to the fact that sometimes it's difficult to set up all the infrastructure needed for starting a frame net, for creating frames, for creating the lexical units, so on and so forth. Uh, and those teams who already have the infrastructure and they have their own tools know uh, about the difficulty in getting funding for expanding the database of frames in the current scenario. And also, we know that those initiatives can only thrive if we are able to keep an active and collaborative community of frame developers around the world. So those five points are the motivations for building this tool. So in a nutshell, uh, everything when you talk about resources is about coverage, right? So it's all about coverage every time. So every time you say, oh, I'm building a frame net and someone will ask you, so what's the coverage? And then you submit a proposal for building frames and then someone Else we'll ask you, okay, but what's the coverage that we will achieve uh, in the end? But is it only about coverage? So this is one question that keeps bugging us for many, many years now. 
and it's somehow the background frame of the whole development of Lutma. Because uh, we strongly believe that for us to be able to build a comprehensive frame-based resource, uh, of course, we have to take care of coverage, but we also have to take care of quality and availability, right? And why quality and availability are so important? First, because frame creation is not a simple process. It's a highly complex uh, process. It has as its final product a very fine-grained uh, system of concepts that is itself connected to a network of other very fine-grained uh, systems of concepts, which are deeply grounded on how each language lexicalizes com uh, concepts or how each language combines them, changes them, modifies them in constructions, for example, right? And because this is not a simple process, we know that poorly created frames may end up causing more harm than good. So if you start creating uh, frames in a non-careful way, you may end up um, damaging the existing frame net resources. Also, <clears throat> uh, the existing tools, and by existing tools, I'm including the FrameNet Brazil web annotation tool uh, that have been developed so far by the different frame nets, end up presupposing a very high level of theoretical and methodological knowledge to be used. Uh, on the other hand, if we do have coverage and we do have quality, it does not do a lot uh, for universities, research teams, institutes, if those frames are not available. So frames that are created under proprietary licenses do not uh, help us a lot since we won't have access to them. So changing the question, uh, when we started thinking about the development of LUTMA, we uh, asked ourselves how to ensure coverage, quality, and availability, right? Uh, throughout the development of this tool. And then we came up with this idea, which was to build a wizard-like tool for frame creation in a constrained tutored fashion, right? So this is uh, actually a snapshot of the first diagram of Lutma that we have um, created when we submitted the proposal to our kind funders, which uh, are the Red Hand Lab in the person of Mark Turner. Uh, he's uh, decided to invest in this idea, part of uh, funding the NDS Meyer Research Award grant he received from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. And with this first diagram, uh, which was kind of a starting point for this idea, we came to the conclusion that if we wanted to include more people in this community and have more people create frames, uh, we needed to provide them with a tool that they could easily use like any time. Um, we tend to, to, to say that we aim that, our, our main goal is that Lutma is kind of the new Kindle. So we will ride the subway and instead of looking at people reading their books on Kindle, they will be creating frames on their phones hopefully, uh, and also that we could provide in this very accessible and easy to use interface, all the knowledge on frame semantics, on frame net methodology, someone would need to create a frame in each step they need for doing so. So the idea ended up uh, being implemented, sorry about that PDF. Uh, into three different uh, things. So there is the Lutma app that is the final product. It's accompanied by a set of tutorials. And as I will be discussing in the end, it relies on a global frame net database, on a global frame net data release. So starting with the app, basically we tried to do an algorithmic implementation of the frame creation process. So basically we as much as we can, we ask users simple questions so that they, kill, they can fill in the options they need for that uh, moment in the frame creation process. So users are guided through this, um, through this process, through each step. 
uh, we added additional structure to the basic uh, frame net structure that we usually uh, use for creating frames in the regular tools like the frame net, the Berkeley frame net desktop or uh, the frame net Brazil web tool, for example. So we added additional structures to avoid redundancy in the frame creation. Uh, we also added checkpoints for consistency and coherence uh, for all the relevant steps in the process. I'll be uh, showing some of them to you in a minute. And also we encourage users to link the new frames they create to uh, existing frames in FrameNet, right? Just because uh, the idea is that through this app, people will be able to add more frames to a general uh, database. So we started with two major case types, right? Uh, first, uh, we developed a set of, of steps for people who want to create what is usually the case of the majority of the frames, right? Which are the lexical frames. So uh, in this uh, case type that you see here in the screen to the right, uh, all the processes start with the user searching a lexical unit, entering a lemma. And the reason why it's a search process and not uh, from the start a creation process is precisely to avoid redundancy, right? So because we want this um, tool to be used by people whose target languages are very, very diverse, it may well be the case that someone wants to create a frame for a given lexical unit in their language, but maybe FrameNet Brazil has already created a frame for that, or Berkeley FrameNet has a frame for that, or German FrameNet, or maybe another uh, Lutma user has a frame for that, right? And to the left, what you see is the start screen for creating a non-lexical frame. So usually non-lexical frames are the scenario frames, right? That people create to represent domains and then to create uh, relations from those uh, scenario frames. Today we'll be focusing on lexical frames because in the end, uh, all the steps that are involved in creating the non-lexical frames are also involved in creating the lexical frames. So the first uh, uh, use case that we have developed is precisely this one that I, I just uh, um, exemplified before. So someone wants to create a lexical unit, but um, or to create a frame and starts with a lexical unit that evokes this frame, but actually there is already a frame for that. Right? So let's say that someone wants to uh, create the lexical unit hound as a noun for English, right? So uh, the person will type in hound and choose the language. Uh, the language choice is a combo box because we have all the languages uh, in ISO, uh, ISO, uh, entered in the, in the tool. And then the part of speech is defined according to the global frame net shared task part of speeches. There are 10 that people can, can choose. And then this person will uh, search the global frame net uh, database. And there is no lexical unit whose lemma is hound, right? Currently in the at least in the last version of the Berkeley FrameNet database we have. Uh, but then what Lutma does is that checking external databases that are freely available, for example, uh, multilingual WordNet or BubbleNet, uh, the tool will look for synonyms to that lemma in those other databases, or if it, can't not, it cannot find synonyms in the same language, it, we'll look for translation equivalents in other languages, right? Because as I said, it may be the case that someone wants to create Cão de Caça, which is a translation of hound into Brazilian Portuguese. And there is already a lexical unit or a frame for that. And then uh, because somewhere in WordNet, there is a connection between hound and dog, right? Then the system suggests, uh, suggests dog in the animals frame. Okay, and uh, if the person uh, clicks this uh, button, it will read, the person will read 
the definition of the frame. And of course, they can access the full frame description with everything, like the lexical unit reports and all the frame elements and so on and so forth. Um, that uh, button you see to the right corner uh, allows you to add the lexical unit to this frame, right? And what you see here is one example of the mini tutorial information that we give people. So every time the user is accessing some functionality of the tool for the first time, some uh, coach boxes appear and tell the user what to do, right? So the person can add their U to the frame. And if the person decides to do so, right? We ask them to provide an example sentence. This is important because someone else, if this person wants to check whether that's the correct sense they want for hound when they were creating that lexical unit in the frame, they can look at this example sentence. And then the person would save the lexical unit. So note that in this case, no new frame was created, but even so the frame net database was enriched by the addition of a new lexical unit that wasn't present in the database before, right? Uh, but it may be well the case that people end up having to add new frames, right? So uh, let's say that someone wants to create a frame for robots since it's so in fashion those days, right? And then the person adds a robot as a noun in English and searches global frame net. And then uh, because we don't have any synonyms for robot in the frame net database, we don't have any lexical units in other languages that are equivalent to robots. Then the, uh, the tool says that there is no matching lexical unit. And then there are two options, right? The person can just create a new frame or if this person actually knows that there is such a, a lexical unit, this person can report a bug. So this is now the first kind of uh, additional structure that we have uh, added to the, um, to the tool, to, to Lutma, which basically is uh, to ask users to select the root frame type, right? So what is a root frame type? Uh, years ago in uh, a collaboration, if I'm not mistaken with Google, but Colin and Miriam are here, they can correct me. Uh, Berkeley FrameNet organized a frame lattice list, which grouped together frames under type frames. So event is a frame in FrameNet, entity is another one, relation is another one, attribute and state. So what we did is that we took advantage of this previous work and uh, we actually asked people to say, what's the kind of frame? Why do we do that? Because a lot of frames inherit event or entity or relation or attribute or state. And we did a survey of the most frequent frame elements in the frames inheriting those high node frames. And it's interesting because those uh, frames are repeated, those frame elements are repeated across frames because peripheral frame elements are usually correlated with the type of the concept uh, represented in the frame. And then you will see that it makes the work of frame creation much easier and much more consistent with the rest of FrameNet. But of course, if the person wants to create a frame that does not suit any of those possibilities, uh, they can choose undefined, none of the above. So for this case, for the robot frame, the automata frame we're creating, uh, we'll be choosing the entity. Right? And then you have a very short definition. An entity can be a thing, a living being, a concept, and so on and so forth. Right? And then I'll be entering the frame name, uh, automata, and the frame definition. The reason why you see a check here next to the frame name is because while the user is typing, the app checks all the frames in the database to avoid repetition of the frame name. Right? And if there is a very, very similar frame name, this will be flagged to the user. So like there is a frame which is, has a name very similar to this one. Would you like to look at it before? Maybe you're 
duplicating some, some effort. Uh, and then you add the frame definition. So I added a, a very short definition. Words in this frame are used to name a machine, the automaton whose function mimics uh, that of a living being, right? And then in the next step, because we want this process to be as similar, the results of this process to be as similar to a frame net frame as possible, uh, we suggest the user the possibility to add a uh, frame relation, right? And why do we uh, do it? Basically, because when people add uh, frame to frame relations, they can copy frame elements in the mother frame into the daughter frame, right? So by clicking in the add new frame to frame relations, um, here in this box, people can choose all the possible relations in FrameNet. Here I'm choosing inheritance and saying that automata inherits entity. And then when I choose that, the screen uh, loads all the frame elements in entity that are mandatory in this inherited in inheritance relation, meaning all the core and peripheral frame elements, right? So here, what we can do is that we can edit um, the name of the frame elements to make them more specific since this is the case for inheritance relations. So we can change entity to automaton and type to function, for example. But it's very likely the case that people may want to add new frame elements. So, uh, in the next uh, screen, we take all the frame elements that the person chose to copy from the inheritance uh, relation and ask them first to define the coreness status of each one of them and to add a definition of each of the frame element in the newly created frame, right? So for example, I'm... Uh, add informational causes a peripheral frame element and specifying the definition that it's the action that brings about the automaton, not the entity as it would be in the entity frame. And the automaton is core, it's a machine whose function mimics that of a living being and so on and so forth, right? And then in the next screen, we see all the frame elements already edited, which were copied in the inheritance relation plus all the frame elements that are very, very likely in entity frames. And here, for example, we can see that there is a creator frame element, right? Which is kind of more likely than formational cause for the automaton frame. So I can uncheck this box and check only this box. And here the user gets the impression of what usually goes with the frame this person wants to create. In the next step, we can add frame elements to frame element relations, such as excludes, requires, core set. This is not the case for this frame since it only has one core frame element, the automaton. And then before I save the automata frame, I have the possibility to edit everything I have created just to make everything coherent. And then I can save this uh, new frame. Right? So you saw that throughout this uh, set of screens, there are a lot of places where you saw some small icons with question marks. Uh, those are handles for one of the kinds of tutorials we've been developing together with the tool. So there are three types of tutorials, the coach cards, the text tutorials, and the video tutorials. So the coach cards, as I, uh, I've shown you before, are short texts focusing on how to use the Lutma app shown only on the first time the user sees a given screen. So for example, if someone wants to create a gushi in English as an adjective, uh, for the first time the person sees the frame button, right? A coach box says that it's a quick preview. So you can click on an LU for a preview of the frame description. The same thing that happens with uh, happened with the add LU to the frame coach box that we saw before. So note that those are not tutorials about frame semantics or about frame net. 
So they're just hints on how to use the app itself. The text tutorials, on the other hand, focus on FrameNet methodology, and they actually focus on snippets of frame element methodology, just to give the user exactly the amount of information they need for that step uh, of the process. So since people have to first enter a lemma, we give them the definition of what is a lemma in FrameNet, right? And then if the person understands what is a lemma in the context of FrameNet by reading this very short text, then they click got it and they can fill in the lemma. But if not, they can just go to the tutorial. Those kinds of tutorials are accessed every time someone clicks a question mark icon in the interface. If the person chooses to go to the tutorial, then they get to the video tutorials, which are uh, very deep explanations on frame semantics and frame net topics that are relevant to the frame creation process. So for example, there is a video on the lexical side of frame net uh, that focuses on word forms, lexemes, lemmas, and lexical units. Uh, basically, uh, the process of creating video tutorials is uh, frame uh, specialists uh, write a script, and then our video specialist, so frame specialist is Maousha, video specialist is uh, Fred, uh, turns it into an animation basically focusing on the key concepts, right? Uh, and then this is narrated and subtitled, right? With the original um, script. So you can see that the, uh, what is a lexeme and then you have uh, examples and then what is a lexical unit and so on and so forth. And after all those tutorials uh, are done, other than being accessed through the beautifully designed uh, interface that Marcelo drew and uh, Arthur implemented, uh, we will organize them in learning tracks, right? So learning tracks will not only group the videos and the texts, but also have pointers to papers uh, and presentations and other videos. Uh, which will be embedded in the video tutorials. So when people are watching, they can click and go to a different uh, part of a different tutorial if they want to know, to learn more about some other aspect of frame semantics or frame net. So this is meant to be some sort of self-instruction material uh, for users that are interest, interested in learning more about frame semantics and frame net. And then, uh, moving to the last part of the presentation, uh, of course, for this tool to uh, suit the needs of more and more frame net groups and more and more people, it's very important that the only thing in it that's only presented in English is the interface. So yes, we chose English as a uh, interlingual, representation for people using the tool, but only in the interface. So the idea is that uh, the database that is searched uh, in throughout the process contains all the frames that have been created for all the different languages possible for all the different frame net teams possible, right? And also the, the users of the tool. So the idea is that for this tool to actually work, of course, we will need an initial data release that will allow users to link their newly created frames to existing ones. Uh, we could start with uh, Berkeley FrameNet 1.7, for example, right? But the thing is there are more frames that have been created by other teams. And there are lexical units in other languages that have been attached to the Berkeley FrameNet 1.7 data release in the shared annotation task. Uh, the reason for that also for uh, advocating in favor of a global frame net database is that a multilingual database would reduce uh, unwanted redundancy and enhance collaboration. Since people could, for example, see examples in a language that are more closely related to the ones they work with. 
and the Global FrameNet Initiative, together with all the existing uh, FrameNets, may provide a very, very solid foundation for a new community of frame creators, since those are the, the, the people with the expertise in the, in the topic. So a couple of months ago, we issued a survey uh, about how, the, 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 how people already working with a FrameNet feel like uh, contributing data to a global frame net database. And we had um, team leaders from nine different languages uh, answering the survey. So German, Greek, English, French, uh, the Canadian French uh, team, uh, Hindi, Latvian, Japanese, Portuguese, and Swedish. And uh, the good news is that 100% of them are willing to contribute data and different kinds of data. So among the nine respondents, respondents, seven of them said they would be willing to contribute uh, the LUs that they added to the global framework shared annotation task, the annotations that they added to the shared annotation task, uh, the LUs in their local frame net database or the annotations in their local frame net database or the frames they created in their local frame net database, right? And some others uh, are more uh, restricted in terms of the kinds of data they want to contribute, usually due to annotation uh, restrictions, because usually for those cases, people do their annotation on proprietary corpora and they cannot share them. But this is actually very, very good news. So we are now in the process of putting together uh, <clears throat> the global frame net their release that will be accompanying the uh, LITMA tool, okay? And uh, for those of you who are now asking, how can I contribute to this effort? We have some ideas uh, because what we will need for this to work is uh, to have a consolidated community of frame creators, of LUTMERs to put it this way. So uh, leaders of the current FrameNet initiatives can contribute their data to the global FrameNet data release, which is already on the way. Uh, people who are experienced FrameNetters can join uh, our team of beta testers and provide feedback on their experience with uh, the tool. Uh, we really want people who try to break it just to see what goes wrong, what we have not anticipated. Uh, and of course, everyone interested in the global frame net effort may join the initiative and help build the next stage of the of LUTMA, the one that starts when the tool is released, when uh, uh, which is to build a community of people who develop frames, review them, upvote them, downvote them, and help uh, and contribute to this shared knowledge. So. A uh, couple of credits, those are the, the icons that we've used in this presentation. And once again, the acknowledgements to uh, our funders. And thank you. So if you have questions, we'll be happy to take them.